transcribed. Now listen to Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Father, a half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Crosley, makers of pace-setting products for happier living. Crosley Automatic Television, oh boy! Beautiful Crosley Shelvador Refrigerators, the world's most convenient. Wonderful Crosley Automatic Electric Rangers. Crosley Shelvador Freezers, color style radios, and many other leading home appliances. You've heard of Tail End Charlie, haven't you? You know, the youngest member of a family who lives on hand-me-downs and leftovers. Well, his lot isn't really so bad. But every now and then, Charlie decides it's time to rebel. And at a certain white frame house on Maple Street, a Charlie rebellion is underway. Only this Charlie's name is Kathy. Like this. Turn blue, bud. What did I do? You see, Margaret? Well, I certainly prefer it to drop dead. You too, Betty. Turn blue. Kathy, try a different color. All right, then. Turn blue. Purple. <laughs> Kathy, come in here. She's been acting this way for days. I think we ought to take her to a doctor. You take me to a doctor, and you know what I'll tell him? Turn blue. <laughs> Kathy, stop it this instant. Look here, kitten. That's no way for little girls to act. Little girls, little girls. That's all I ever hear. Betty and Bud get everything, and I don't get anything. Just because they happen to be born first. Kathleen, that's not true. There's no difference in the way we treat you children. Is that so? Betty gets a brand new green formal, and I get her old pink dress. Made over. If you don't like the color of your dress, why don't you give it the same treatment you've given us this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Turn blue. <laughs> Anybody want to go out and play catch, Kathy? No, I won't. You've got a brand new mitt, and I've got your old one. Want to play catch, Dan? Yeah, I'd like to, bud, but I promised myself I'd clean the basement this morning. <laughs> hey, Mom, don't put that donut away. I'll eat it. Help yourself, bud. Mmm, that's good. Can I have a donut, too, Mommy? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. That was the last one. How about a glass of milk? I only get leftovers, and now you're even giving those to somebody else. <laughs> the very idea, you get as much, if not more, than Betty and Bud. Leftovers, if I'm lucky. Margaret, if she feels that way, let's be sure. We may be showing partiality without realizing it. From now on, let's bend over backward to see that Kathy is treated like the others. Well, hooray. <laughs> Every time Betty and Bud get a present, Kathy will get the same thing, or something absolutely equal. Every time they're granted a privilege, Kathy will be granted an equal privilege. Is that a three-way deal, Dad? Certainly. There you are, Kathy. You're on equal footing with the others. Okay. If Bud goes to the movies, you go to the movies, too. If Betty uh, gets a new permanent, you get a new permanent. Oh, boy! If Bud gets a donut, you get a donut. If uh, Betty gets a new dress, you get a new dress. Dad. If Bud gets a tire for his motor scooter, you get a tire for your bicycle. Dad. If Betty gets... I'll get it! If Betty gets the phone, you get it the next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious about this, Margaret. Dad. Oh, hi, Jane. Now, what is it, Bud? What would I do with a permanent? <laughs> For heaven's sake, Bud, I don't mean oh, it that Jane, literally. Bud, weren't you going to play baseball? Oh, okay, Mom. How about it, Squirt? Not until I get a new mitt. All right. I was going to get Joe Phillips in the first place. Oh, I know it'll be all right with Mother. Don't think I don't appreciate it, because I do, I do, I do. Goodbye. Shall I explain our agreement to Betty? Just so I don't have to. Mother, I'm going to ask you the most divine favor. Oh, dear. All right, what is it, Betty? Well, there's just the most excruciating new boy in the dramatic club, and Janie says it's all right if I ask him to dinner tonight. May I? Oh, if it's all right with Janie, you needn't ask your mother. After all, who does the cooking around here? Janie? 
Of course not, Father. You don't understand. There is the understatement of the year. <laughs> this is leap year week. All the girls at school are supposed to ask fellas they've never been out with for dates, and here it is Saturday already. What does Janie have to do with your waiting till Saturday? Well, I borrowed her evening wrap last week, so I had to give her first choice of date. And she planned all along to ask this new love bug. And then at the last minute, she lost her nerve, and so she's going to ask Billy Smith. And boy, am I ever glad. Boy, am I ever glad that Leap Year doesn't come any oftener. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose it'll be all right, Betty. Oh, wonderful. You'll love him, Mother. He's real, real George. That's a peculiar name. <laughs> <laughs> Father, that's just an expression. Betty, what makes you think this George will swallow the bait? Why, he's just dying to go out with me. Last Thursday, when I left dramatic class, he said, Good night. And it was obvious that what he really meant was, Betty, as soon as I get the nerve to ask you, I'll be taking you home on Thursday night. <laughs> well, he must be a splendid actor to be able to read so much into so little. <laughs> All right, ask George. I don't care. Good. Then I'll ask a boy to dinner tonight, too. What? Kathy, are you still here? Naturally. And I know a boy who's real, real George, too. What's she talking about, Mother? Dear, your father and I have promised Kathy that from now on she is to be treated just like you older children. If you can ask a boy to dinner, so can I. Daddy said so. Mother, I'm trying to make an impression on this boy. I can't have Kathy and Jimmy Woody at the same table. I'm not asking Jimmy Woody, so there. Kathy, maybe you'd have more fun if you waited until another night. After all, Betty and her friend are older, I and... knew it. Now I'm the youngest again, and you're going to go back on your word. Margaret, we did make a promise to Kathy, and if Betty's going to be a complete idiot about leap year, there's no reason why Kathy shouldn't be an idiot, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute, Jim. Betty, I want you to go upstairs and straighten your room. Kathy, you finish drying the dishes. Well, all right. But I have to call him soon. And nothing better happen to spoil my evening. Nothing better happen to spoil my evening either. Jim, I don't think you had any right to side with Kathy like that. Margaret, we made a promise. Yes, but this is important to Betty. Kathy and her friend could be very embarrassing to someone Betty's age. Well, it's important to Kathy, too. Besides, she might decide to make it really embarrassing for Betty if we disappoint her. Mm. Unless Kathy promises to behave herself, she can have her dinner in the den. Say, that's the way out of it, Margaret. Let Kathy invite her friend, and the two of them can roast Wheaties and play games. <laughs> well, that might work out. Of course. And I think I'll join them. <laughs> Did you decide I was equal? Kathy, I asked you to dry the dishes. They were all done. It's all right, Kathy. You can invite your friend tonight. Oh, can I, Mommy? Yes, dear. You'd better call him before your sister ties up the phone for the balance of the year. <laughs> call him? Me? Of course. Go on. Leap while the calendar's on your side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daddy, I, I couldn't. <laughs> what do you mean you couldn't? Golly, he's so wonderful. He's so strong. He's got the biggest muscles of anyone in the playground. You call him for me. <laughs> He's your friend, isn't he? But, Daddy, he can kick a kickball twice as far as anyone else. I just couldn't call him. Oh, for... Go ahead, Jim. What? This is your idea. Cupid is supposed to handle messages. All right, I'll do it. Never let it be said that Jim Anderson was afraid to face a few muscles. <laughs> particularly over the telephone. Oh, Daddy, you're wonderful. Now where are you going? To look up Howard's number. What a charming evening. One of our guests will say, wherefore art the potatoes? And the other will kick them at him. <laughs> Hurry up, Daddy, I've got it. All right, I'm coming. Here it is, maple 238. Let's see, white, Mrs. Lee White. And your friend's name is Howard? Uh-huh. Hurry up. Call him, Daddy. All right, all right. And whatever you do, don't say it was my idea. 
I just hope Howard isn't as bashful as... Oh, hello? Is this Mrs. White? Well, my name is Anderson. Uh, Mrs. White, uh, my daughter and your son Howard are evidently pretty good friends, and my daughter thought... Daddy! Uh, that is, Mrs. Anderson and I thought it would be awfully nice if Howard had dinner with us this evening. That is, of course, if you allow him out at night. <laughs> Fine. I can assure you we'll take good care of him. Yes, I'll hang on, Mrs. White. Oh, Daddy, is he coming? Howard's cleaning up the basement, but his mother gave her permission. She's asking Howard now. Oh, I hope he'll come. Maybe he'll come early and lend a hand with our basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Mrs. White. Oh, he will? Well, that's fine. Suppose I pick Howard up at about 5.30, and then I'll drive him home again afterwards. Are you sure he can get home safely? Well, thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh, Daddy, Howard's coming. Howard's coming. Funny, his mother didn't seem the least concerned about how or when he got home. I certainly don't think a fourth grader should be out by himself after dark. Fourth grader? Howard White happens to be the assistant director at the school playground. <laughs> what? He's in charge every afternoon from three to five. It's part of his college work. Kathy, do you mean to say I've invited a grown-up physical education student to be your date? Why not? Oh, Daddy, he's so stupid. <laughs> but, Kathy, I... Well, I finished my room. Now may I have some privacy while I call my date? Go ahead. You sure you can do it yourself? Of course I'm sure. What do you mean? I've just played John Alden for Kathy, and I'll be happy to do the same for you. Father, I am perfectly capable of inviting Howard for dinner. Howard? Yes, Howard White. <laughs> Howard White? Oh, no. <laughs> Betty Anderson turned blue. <laughs> and now, here is lovely and talented Hollywood star, Margaret Lindsay. Good evening. You know, some of my friends are still missing all of today's wonderful, endlessly fascinating television entertainment. And when I ask why they don't own television, some say they live in neighborhoods where television reception is poor. Well, that simply is not too much of a problem anymore. Not when you own Crosley Automatic Television. You see, the exciting new Crosley sets automatically boost a weak signal to give you the clearest, sharpest, brightest picture possible, even in extreme fringe areas. And that picture automatically stays rock steady and free from picture disturbances. Yes, and with Crosley, when the picture's right, the sound's right too. Your Crosley sees to that automatically. The only thing you do to enjoy the finest picture and performance in television is turn the Crosley Unituner to the station you want. It's as easy and accurate as tuning a radio. Then you relax in uninterrupted comfort as your Crosley adjusts itself automatically. Tomorrow you see your Crosley dealer. Admire the lovely, authentically styled Crosley cabinets. Watch Crosley automatic television in action. You'll say, here's the finest in television priced to make you doubly happy. It's an hour before the guests arrive at the Andersons on Maple Street for an unexpected yet very exclusive dinner party. All the guests are Howard White. His dinner partner? Well, equality reigns, so take your pick. Like this. Just give me one reason why Howard White would be interested in you. Just one reason. I'm a girl. <laughs> I said a reason, not an opinion. Betty. Howard's mine. He's mine. He's mine. It's a good thing Howard has enough biceps to go around. <laughs> Honestly, every time I think of Father calling a grown man's mother to ask him to dinner. <laughs> Father, how could you have done such a thing? How could you? It was quite easy. I used the telephone. <laughs> oh, come on, girls. We'll all have fun. We'll share, Howard. It's 
going to spoil all my plans for the evening. I thought we'd sit by the fire, reading Romeo and Juliet together. Oh. Daddy said Howard and I could play games together. Well, he can't very well play kicking games with you while he's reading Shakespeare with me. Oh, I don't know. He could just kick his lines around. <laughs> anyway, we weren't going to play kicking games. Thank goodness for that. And don't you go making any plans for him, Betty, because he's mine. He is not. He's mine. He's mine. He's Girls, mine. I've had about enough of this. Go to your rooms and try to remember you're both supposed to be ladies. That thing a lady? She's a child, and she's acting like one, just like one. And you, Tallulah, <laughs> are acting just a little too much today. Go on, take off, and cool off. Girls, your guest, uh, our guest, will be here in about 30 minutes. You'd both better get dressed. All she needs is a broom. If the word gets around school, what my father did... Margaret, what's wrong with us? It sounds like we're raising a couple of hair-pulling she-tigers. <laughs> now, Jim. Our own daughters, ready to scratch each other's eyes out over a man. <laughs> and such a man. I can hardly wait to meet him. Margaret, I'm worried. If you're not, the least you could do is try to help me find a peaceful solution to this mess. Let's be realistic for a minute. Howard undoubtedly thought you were asking him to be Betty's guest. And it isn't logical that a boy of 20 would be interested in a girl nine years old. I guess you're right, Margaret. Then why don't you explain it to Kathy before Howard arrives? She'll understand. Oh, sure. <laughs> Kathleen Anderson, take off my sweater this second. I will not. It's my turn to wear it. Jim, that talk... Daddy, Daddy, tell Betty I can wear her sweater. Tell her, Daddy. Imagine the nerve, Mother, my Christmas cashmere, my most prized possession. Why do you have Betty's sweater on, Angel? You have a new one of your own. Not one ten sizes too big for can't you see how good it goes with my green skirt? Can't you, Daddy? What green skirt? She's wearing it, only it's under the sweater. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, does seem to be a little large, Kathy. But sloppy joes are fashionable. That is not a sloppy joe. It is on me. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen returned Betty's sweater. But she wore it yesterday, and what Daddy said this morning means I can wear it today. You know very well it means no such thing. Betty, I'll get your sweater. Please finish dressing. Yes, Mother. Sometimes I wish I didn't have so much acting talent. <laughs> Thank you for the sweater, Kathleen. Okay, here it is. That's a good girl. Now, I better take a look at the dinner. You two don't need me, do you, Jim? Well, uh, uh, Something might boil over. Yeah. Wear my own sweater. Just because I'm the ugly one. Why, kitten, you're not ugly. And your own sweater is very pretty. It is not. It fits. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Howard likes me. Sure he does, kitten. In a way. Uh, sit down. Let's uh, talk a minute. Okay. Uh, it's <laughs> been kind of rough around here today, hasn't it? I'm sorry, Daddy, but if Betty thinks she can take Howard away from me just like that, she's wrong. Well, the whole thing was an unfortunate mistake, Kathy. Betty didn't know you and Howard were friends when she decided to ask him to dinner. But she didn't ask him. You asked him for me, remember? And he likes me real well. Honest, Daddy, I can tell by the way he treats me at the playground. Well, suppose you tell me all about it, baby. Well, it kind of all started at second base. I tried to steal second, and Howard called me safe. So I wasn't even sorry I skinned my knee. Well, that follows. And then do you know what he did? He put a bandage on my knee. <laughs> well, that was nice. Did he ever bandage Betty's knee? Well, let's hope not. <laughs> Look, Kathy... Wouldn't you just as soon ask Jimmy Woody to dinner some other night? I don't want Jimmy Woody some other night. I want Howard tonight. Now, Kathy, there's no need to cry about <laughs> And I invited him first. Kathy, Howard's going to be here in a very few minutes. We'll figure something out. You don't want him to see those tears, do you? No. Well, then, why don't you just go put your sweater on for dinner, okay? Okay, Daddy. Okay. 
How'd it go? About as successfully as Stanford in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> oh, Jim, didn't you settle it? Margaret, look, Kathy's being silly, all right, but she's quite serious. I just couldn't tell her it was no go. I know, dear, but that doesn't solve our problem. Well, the problem can solve itself. The girls will share real George Howard, and that's that. We're going to stay a happy family, if it kills us. Jim, he's here. What shall we do? We could water bag him from upstairs. <laughs> but Jim, he'll probably have his good suit the on. The only other alternative is to answer the door and get it over with. Bud. Hi, Dan. What are you doing ringing the doorbell? I just wanted to see who answers it when I'm not home. <laughs> Well, now you see. But I must admit, it's certainly good to see you, bud. Honest, Dad? Any problems? Want to have anyone to dinner? Huh? Your father means, uh, how was the movie? Tired. Turned out to be one of those sticky deals about two girls mooning over one guy. <laughs> and you know how those things are, Dad. I'm afraid I do. Howard, how terribly nice to see. Oh, bud. Hey, what's going on around here? Bud, quit while you're ahead and don't ask. <laughs> the girls are having a guest for dinner. A guest? Oh, you should have told me. I would have brought Joe home. We're supposed to have stuff equal around here, aren't we? Stuff is equal. We're all having the same guest. <laughs> oh. Well, who is he? Howard White. Do you know him, Bud? Well, I know who he is. I just rode past him about a block down the street. He's less than a block away? Yeah. Hey, you know what? I'll bet he's heading here. He'll walk right by if he's smart. He's coming! He's coming! I saw him from the window! Now listen, girls. One thing has to be understood. You're going to be ladies while Howard's our guest. You're going to share him equally. I'm sitting next to him at dinner. You are not. I am. Howard can sit between you. That'll look silly, Father. The three of us on one side and Bud and the food on the other. <laughs> I won't mind. Well, we'll have to change the table in a hurry. It's set for two on a side now. He's turned up the walk. He's turned up the walk. It's really nothing with those muscles. <laughs> Wait, Mother. Why don't we do it the fair way? Let Howard decide which one of us he'd prefer to sit next to. Betty. That's okay with me. Howard won't fail me. Don't bother, but I'll get it. I'll get it. I don't want Howard trampled. Oh, my God. You two are as bad as those goons in the picture. Good evening. I'm Jim Anders. How do you do, sir? I'm Howard White. Oh, let me take your coat, Howard. Thank you, sir. I can't tell you how happy we are to have you. All of us. <laughs> oh, thank you. Howard, how terribly nice to see you. Hi, Howard. Oh, Kathy, Betty, I didn't know you two were sisters. Occasionally. <laughs> Margaret, this is Howard White. How do you do, Howard? Hello, Mrs. Anderson. I, I'm very sorry I'm late, but Mother insisted I wait to bring some of these cookies she just baked. Well, thank you. That was very kind of her. How is your mother, Howard? I haven't talked with her since this afternoon. <laughs> uh, why don't you come sit on the sofa, Howard, next to me? Look, Howard, I brought my kickball inside to show you. Kathleen, baby. <laughs> You're not supposed to play kickball in the living room. I'll turn her blue personally. <laughs> oh, Howard, uh, you haven't met Bud. Hi, Bud. Say, I've seen you around. Sure, I rode past you five minutes ago. Oh, no. You're on the high school basketball team. I saw you play last week. You did? How nice. Howard, would you like to see You look my... real good out there, bud. Alert. I played a little ball myself. Hey, you're Howard White. <laughs> <laughs> a boy, bud. <laughs> I like the fast break the coach is giving you, bud. It keeps you busy, huh? Sure, but it's fun. We're running through some new plays tonight, getting ready for the tournament. Oh, I'd like to see them. Would you like to see my electric football game, Howard? Maybe later, Kathy. I think we'd better sit down to dinner now, don't you, Jim? 
Sure. Everyone set? Of course. You bet. Well, good. We're um, a very informal family, Howard. No particular places at the table. Very casual, you know. You know. Well, that's fine with me. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, we'll let you choose your seat since you're the guest. That's a splendid idea, Jim. Well, Howard, uh, who would you like to sit next to? Uh, Betty? Kathy? Well, Mr. Anderson, if it's all the same to you, I'd sure like to hear about those basketball plays, so I think I'll sit next to Bud. <laughs> You'll sit next to... <laughs> Jim, I... <laughs> <laughs> Gee, if you're that interested in the plays, Howard, why don't you come to practice with me after dinner? Oh, I'd sure like to. <laughs> what's so funny? Yeah, what's so funny? <laughs> you two have been telling each other to turn blue all day. Well, you've done it. <laughs> You know, friends, when you own Crosley Automatic Television, you never have to jump up from your chair to fiddle with controls. No, sir. Once you've turned the Crosley Unituner to the station you want, that's it. Crosley does all the rest automatically to bring you the brightest, clearest, sharpest picture in television. Why, even in fringe areas, in places where reception is considered poor, Crosley's picture and performance are the finest. For example... The Crosley picture is the steadiest you've ever seen, and it stays that way automatically. Your Crosley set automatically eliminates virtually all picture disturbances, too. And with Crosley, when the picture's right, the sound's right, automatically. Compare Crosley. You'll agree, feature for feature, here is the world's finest in television. Dollar for dollar, here's today's top TV value. See Crosley Automatic Television at your Crosley dealer tomorrow. The leap year dinner at the Andersons is over. The honored guest is at a basketball practice with Bud. And proving that misery loves company, two young ladies who leap too late at Howard White have been turning blue together, aided by Shakespeare, like this. Soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, little sister. I think I'll retire now. Oh, no. Couldn't we have just one more good cry together before we go to bed? <laughs> Wouldn't you be thrilled with a radio that gives you both brilliant performance and brilliant beauty? Then see and hear Crosley's color-styled radios. They're tone-engineered to provide clear, sharp radio reception without fading or blasting from stations near or far. And Crosley cabinets are decorator-designed, sparkling beauties that add lovely highlights of color to any room. Choose your favorite Crosley color-style radio from a variety of color combinations and sizes at your Crosley dealer. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Bargie's orchestra. In our cast were Norma Jean Nilsson as Kathy, Jean Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, and Roland Morris. So until next week at this same time, good night and good luck from the Crosley Division of the Avco Manufacturing Corporation, America's leading manufacturer of today's pace-setting refrigerators, television and radio sets, electric ranges, home freezers, and many other products for happier living. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West with Fran Van Hardesfeld and Callie Curtis. Now it's Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, on NBC. NBC.